So we take you now to Duffy's Tavern, starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meat to eat, Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. What's the matter? You sound like you got a cold. Well, uh, are you doing anything for it? Taking shots, huh? Mm. <laughs> are they doing you any good? Oh, they were until Mrs. Duffy took away the bottle. <laughs> well, tell me, how'd you catch the cold? You took a bath naked? <laughs> well, tell me, what do you usually wear for the tub, Duffy? Long underwear, huh? <laughs> well, why didn't you wear it this time? It wasn't dirty. <laughs> well, look, Duffy, you better watch that cold. You know, there's a lot of that uh, testimonial flu going around. <laughs> yeah, you ought to drink a lot of water. Water. Yeah, the shock treatment. <laughs> well, look, Duffy, I'm busy. I'll call you back, huh? Okay. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Duffy got a bad cold? Yeah, there just seems to be an epidermis going around. <laughs> and uh, we got to be careful around here, too. You know, them germs is pretty tricky. Mm, we got nothing to worry about. What do you mean? Do you think any healthy germ in his right mind would leave a nice, clean sewer to come into this place? <laughs> It's been done, Eddie. Just because Duffy's Tavern is filthy don't mean it can't be sanitary. <laughs> now, leave us take all precautions. The first thing we gotta do is put something over the free lunch. Hmm. Uh, what do you suggest? A skull and crossbones? <laughs> no, we can't come up to free lunch, Mr. Archie. Why not? Well, you can't get close enough to it. <laughs> Well, uh, then at least leave us squirt some DDT on it. <laughs> Another thing, we got to be extremely careful about the kitchen. I want you to see that the dishes are clean enough to eat off of. <laughs> Very good, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot you had a couple of letters that just came for you. Oh, thanks. Let's see. Hey, Eddie, get a load of the color of this stationery. Heliotripe. <laughs> Very fetching. Yeah, and uh, get a snoot for this perfume. Smells like uh, Machiavelli's Irregardless. <laughs> how about that, Eddie? Um, uh, how do you do it? Oh, it's easy when you're irresistible. Uh, leave us open this little Billy Doe and see what she has to say. Why, that sneaky finance company. <laughs> and so our little Billy Do turns out to be a Do Billy. <laughs> Very clever, Eddie. Uh, not funny, mind you, but clever. Uh, <clears throat> now, let's see this other letter. Oh. From Dave Hossinger. What a nerve he's got to write me. That dirty thief. That dirty crook. That dirty swindler. Dave Hossinger. You remember him, Eddie. That old pal of mine. Oh. <laughs> me, the, the one that sold you the lake in Central Park that time? <laughs> the lake in Central Park. Eddie, I'm not that stupid. He just sold me the oyster bed. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 what about the time he sold you that anchovy ranch? Well, that might still pan out, Eddie. You know, the vogue for me can't last forever. Now, the one that burned me up was that Fort Knox deal. $150 for a drill. <clears throat> well, leave us see what the letter says. Hmm. Dear Arch. To err is human, to forgive divine. That's all. Signed, Honest Dave. P.S. We'll see you Friday night. Eddie, so help me if he sticks his face in here tonight, I'm gonna slip him a Mickey. Uh, oh, <laughs> Oh, hello, Finnegan. How's things? Oh, it's terrible, Arch. I can't seem to find an apartment. Do you know of any vacancies? 
Eddie, this is a new one. A vacancy, looking for a vacancy. <laughs> what do you want an apartment for? What'd you do, get kicked out of your house? I beg your pardon, Arch. We was not kicked out, we was evicted. <laughs> What's the difference? Evicted is with furniture. <laughs> oh, that dirty rat. Who? That landlord. The landlord is all alike, Arch. When you move in, it's... Good morning, Clifton. May I help you with the garbage? Good evening, Mr. Finnegan. Can I help you find the keyhole? <laughs> and let a year go by without paying your rent, and boom, you're out on the street. <laughs> Wait a minute. You mean you're right? You're living with your furniture around on the sidewalk? That must be terrible. Well, it wouldn't be too bad if it wasn't for the servant problem. The servant problem? Yeah. The street cleaner ain't been around in three days. <laughs> Horrible with uh, so many people tramping through the house all day, it must get rather untidy. So I don't mind them tramping through, Arch. It's the way they throw their cigar butts in the living room. <laughs> Me old man's getting curvature of the spine, picking them up. But Finnegan, how do you manage to get any sleep out there on the sidewalk? So I don't. I get to bed and start snoring and... Before I know it, every dog in the neighborhood's in bed with me. <laughs> uh, all night, them trucks and buses going back and forth and back and forth. Well, uh, why don't you move to a one-way street? You'll have more privacy. <laughs> Go on. Every time I walk out of the house, I have to walk all the way around the block to get home again? <laughs> yeah, that would that would be a little inconvenient. So well, uh, <clears throat> let's hope you find an apartment soon, Finnegan. Uh, I hope so. Me father went up to see about a place today that he thinks we can get for 600 a month. But Finnegan, your family can't afford 600 a month. I know, but it's better than living in the street, ain't it? <laughs> well, yes, that's a fallacy. Uh. Oh, Finnegan, uh, I have a message for you from your mother. The what? She wants you to stop at the hardware store on your way home and get a long electric cord. She says the toaster don't reach the lamppost. <laughs> oh, still okay, Miss Duffy. Well, uh, so long, Art. If you happen to be driving through the house anytime, be sure to drop in. Well, <laughs> do that. Ah, that poor guy. You know, it must be tough to have to live like a goldfish. But on second thought, he breathes through his mouth anyway, don't he?
Betty, I've been thinking. I, I wonder what that hostage could be after this time. I don't know. Uh, have you kept up your payments on the Holland Tunnel? <laughs> Please, Eddie, don't rub it in. Oh, wait a minute. Ain't that him coming in the door now, puffing on that big cigar? It couldn't be, Eddie. He couldn't have the knife to come in here again. It must be him. Look at them smoke rings. Corkscrews. <laughs> yeah, it is him. I wonder what he's after tonight. Well, Archie, my old pal. Gosh, it's good to see you again. To be back here with real people. My people. The salt of the earth. Well, say something to me, Arch. Hello, you crumb. <laughs> Archie, that's wonderful. What a clever welcome. <laughs> well, I intended to put out the welcome mat for you, but you stole it the last time you was here. <laughs> Arch, you don't act like you're very glad to see me. Not glad to see you, why, Dave, though. The way my heart is going pitter-patter, I'm... Afraid I'm gonna get Aunt Jemima back to worse. <laughs> Arch, old man, I, I'm afraid you're saying that with your tongue in your cheek. Well, with you around, it ain't safe to leave it hanging out. <laughs> Arch, this attitude is very surprising. Now, come on, we're old friends. Tell me what's on your mind. Hostage, you, you are nothing but a low-down, dirty crook and a cheap, conniving thief. Oh, come on. Stop beating around the bush. <laughs> Tell me, old man, what's on your mind? You know very well what's on my mind. All of that dough that you swindled me out of. Oh, that? Yes, I have thought about it, Arch. And believe me when I tell you that every time I took money from you, it always hurt me. You must have been in constant pain for years. <laughs> well, I guess this is just what I deserve. But I ask you, Arch, as an old friend, to be a little forgiving. You know, life hasn't been a bed of roses for me. It's been an uphill struggle ever since I was born. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know you was born. I, <laughs> I thought you were just paroled in the custody of your parents. <laughs> Hear me out, Arch. As I was saying, I started out as an incubator, baby, and... Even at that age, you was in the can, huh? <laughs> You're bitter, Arch. Come on, old man. You must know that there's some good in me. Well, you remember my old mother, don't you? Yes. May she rest and stir. <laughs> now, look, Dave. No hearts and flowers tonight. You're dealing with dry ice. Now, put it on the line. Uh, how much dough was you planning to pot me out of? Four dollars. Four dollars? You must be slipping. That much you used to invest in me before you even put the bite on. <laughs> What's the four dollars for? A singer. I want you to give him a job here in the tavern. A singer for only four bucks. Now, look, Dave. You know very well for that kind of dough you couldn't buy one Andrew sister. <laughs> Look, I smell a rat And the wind is coming from your direction <laughs> Look, Arch, figure it out I give you a singer He goes to work here and you pay him four bucks Now, what could be crooked about that? It could be such a thing as a singing pickpocket <laughs> Arch, I'll tell you what I'll do I'll let him sing handcuffed Does that satisfy you? Well, where is this kid? Oh, that's the kid over there. Hey, Ricky, come here, will you? Archie, this is Ricky Jordan. Hello, Ricky. Hello, Archie. Tell me quick, Ricky, where did you meet Mr. Hossinger? Well, he was in church one day, and I was singing there. Just a sec. Hossinger in church? <laughs> Dave, you haven't finally gotten around to hustling collection boxes. <laughs> I've been going to church every Sunday. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I'm a reformed man. Look, are you sure that you ain't been seeing too many Leo McCary pictures? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arch, I'm on the level. Now, look, why don't you listen to this boy sing? Well, okay. Uh, what do you sing, kid? Uh, just choir stuff, or can you kind of mellow uh, a dig beat on a gut bucket? <laughs> 
You see, Ricky, I told you you'd be dealing with a man who really knows his music. Oh, I don't know, Dave. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't deny that you're an expert. Well, no, that'd be foolish. <laughs> I do admit that I know a little something about music. A little something? Listen to the man. You who predicted the success of my old Kentucky home? <laughs> you who, who knew Petrillo when he didn't even have a union suit to his name? Well, he should know something. After all, they didn't call me the Hildegard of PS4 for nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Say, what were you again, aren't you? A tenor or a baritone? Uh, more of a second mezzanine. Uh, <laughs> Very high voice I had, sort of a half Nelson Eddy. <laughs> this is very interesting. Where did you sing, Archie? Huh? This is very interesting. Where did you sing? Well, uh, for a while I sang with this Mexican band, uh, Jose Horowitz and his Pitkin Avenue Cucarachas. <laughs> Funny, but I I've never heard of them. You never heard of them? <laughs> you heard of Swing and Sway with Sammy K? Yes. With the cucarachas, it was, come on and get jolly and shake your tamale. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, what would you like to sing, kid? How about stormy weather? Stormy weather. Oh, boy, does that bring back memories. Now, I used to go out with this girl, Wheezy Willamack, and every time they'd play that song, she'd... Well, I guess it's no use being a cad. Uh, go ahead, kid. <laughs> Sing it. Uh, hit it on the upbeat, huh? Don't know why there ain't no sun up in the sky. Stormy weather since my gal and I ain't together. Keeps raining all the time. The time. Life Can't get my poor aching self together I'm weary all the time The time So weary all the time When she went away the blues walked in And met me but if she stayed Away for rock and dare will get me. All I do is pray the Lord above will let me walk in the sun once more and go on. All I have in life is the stormy weather. Can't get myself together, baby. Keeps raining all. The time, the time, the time keeps raining all the time. Oh, that was terrific, kid. Really terrific, but, uh, as an old hand at this singing racket, I think I can give you a few pointers. <laughs> now, uh, the first thing you ought to do is have your tonsils taken out. But I've already had them taken out. You've already had them? Well, then you better have them put back in. <laughs> now, another thing, Ricky, your breathing is all wrong. You've got to relax your nostrils a little more. <laughs> what does that do? What does it do? It's obvious. It gives you more cleft than your palate. <laughs> of course, on the other hand, you can overbreathe too, you know. I, I don't follow you. Well, I'll show you what I mean. Now, take a song like Tchaikovsky's Volga Boten. <laughs> Are you familiar with the movement? Yes, I am. Well, sing a few bars, kid, and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you 
say, kid, it's all in the breather. <laughs> well, what about the deal, Arch? Well, Dave, I think we might make a deal. No, I think you should, Archie. This boy's a terrific singer. Well, thanks, Mr. Mullen. A good-looking boy, too. Nice, strong legs, slim hips, deep chest, broad shoulders, nice face. <laughs> kid, but that, that price, it still bothers me. Arch, I'm telling you, it's a steal. Don't mention that word. <laughs> now, look, we've just figured it out. The kid gets four bucks a day, that would just make Just a it... second, though. We're not asking four bucks a day. It's four bucks a week. Four bucks a week? For that kind of dough, you couldn't even bribe Senator Claghorn. <laughs> Hostinger, now I know there's something crooked with this deal. Well, this forces me to get back in harness. Huh? Uh, Arch, I can see there's only one way to deal with you, my old pal. I see I made a mistake in offering you this boy for $4. Well, certainly, Dave. What do you think I am, a dope? Now, uh... <laughs> what's the real price on a kid? Come on. Come on out with it, Dave. Give me the works. That's just what you're going to get, brother. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, Crosby gets, say, uh, 5000 Now, when Ricky dubs in Crosby's voice, he gets... Wait a minute, Dave. You say this kid dubs in for Crosby? It's a little hard to believe. Oh, you can do it, Art. <laughs> but why do they have to have somebody dub in for Crosby? Why? Did you see Going My Way? Yeah. Well, you know ordinarily when Bing sings, he wears those sport shirts with the open collar. So what? In Going My Way, he had to wear that tight collar. Oh. Need I say more? <laughs> I see. <laughs> I see what you mean, Dave. A collar like that would constrict the lonix. <clears throat> now, uh, <laughs> how much did you say the kid got when he sang for Crosby? I think it was $2,000. Well, that would be a little high for us. You see, we've got a lot of overhead here, mm, Dave. Well, uh, I'm not sure of that price, Arch. Uh, let's verify it. Uh, give me the phone, will you? Okay, here you are. Thank you. Uh, hello, operator. Paramount Studios, please. Paramount? Hey, that's where I made me picture. Yeah, I know, Arch, but they're still in business. <laughs> uh, Paramount? Bing Crosby, please. Thank you. Oh, hello. Hello, dear Bingo. Dear Hasse. <laughs> Look, uh, Bing, uh, confidentially, what did you pay Ricky Jordan that time he dubbed in your voice? It's okay. I'm all alone in a booth. Huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. Two thousand. 
Well, in that case, what do you think he should get for a nightclub job? Uh-huh. Well, thanks, Bing. See you in church. <laughs> well, Archie, you were right. That $4 a week was ridiculous. I told you, Dave. Now, what's the real price? 12 bucks. That's a little more like it. <laughs> okay, Dave, it's a deal. Here's the 12 bucks. Thank you, Arch. Well, I'll be seeing you. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Duffy. Hey, did you hear that kid sing? Terrific, ain't he? And well, you hear the deal I made on him. Well, you see, Hossinger comes in here, and he wants four bucks a week for the kid. So I start maneuvering, and I wind up buying him for a measly 12... Duffy, I'll call you back. Hossinger, <laughs> you come back here, you dirty crook. You... Before we leave Duffy's, Leave us put a couple of nickels in Duffy's jukebox. The plant is spinning, the needle comes down, it's music. 